All right, this video lesson is on gas laws. Uh, we're going to talk about a number of gas laws, and this is the first one that we're going to start with. Uh, first of all, what is a gas law? A gas law is basically a law just like any other law in science. What it's going to do is it's going to describe what happens. It's going to tell us uh, you know, what's happening. It's not going to tell us why, but it describes what happens. Okay, so keep that in mind that that is what a gas law is, describes what happens. All right. What we'll look at later is a theory to explain why we see these various laws. All right. So we're going to use mathematics in these laws, and they can actually a lot of laws tend to be mathematical because the, the mathematics are going to help us predict uh, what's going to happen. All right. So what we're looking at are the various um, variables for um, gases. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there. So we're looking at pressure, temperature, volume, and moles. Okay. Okay, so our first gas law we're going to look at is based on what Robert Boyle did. Robert Boyle was an Irish chemist. What he did was he looked at pressure and volume. Okay, He kept the other two variables constant. So we got four variables here, and we want to see what happens if I change the pressure, what would happen to the volume, or what happens to volume when I change pressure. Okay, So I'm going to show you a little bit of experimental data here, and we'll kind of see what the uh, origins or what, what he came up with based on the, on the experiment. Okay, here's the experimental setup. What we have here is a syringe uh, with a sealed container here. So this is a sealed, uh, um, well, I guess syringe is what I just said. All right, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to change the volume. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push the syringe up, and I'm going to make the volume smaller. And then what's going to happen is the gas is going to start expanding, and I'm going to collect data. So I'm going to collect data for volume, and I'm going to collect data for pressure. And then what we'll do is we'll graph that and kind of look at the data and see what we can figure out here. All right, so I'm going to make this go really... Uh, small, so I notice what happens to the pressure as I make the volume smaller. Pressure starts to go up as I make volume smaller. It's going to be the important principle to look at. All right, so what I can do is collect all this data. Okay, so I got all this data as the the pressure starts to get lower and my volume expands back out. All right, so what I can do is I can then take this data and quickly graph it onto a piece of paper here, or this nice handsome graph that we get. And notice that we get a curve to the data. Well, we don't we don't really like curves in science. What we're going to do is instead of plotting on the x. Now, you guys might be familiar with x and y coordinate systems in, in math. What we're going to use instead of x and y, we're going to use pressure and volume. So we get volume down here and pressure here. So we get this curve. So what that tells us is that there's something going on. We're going to change that to not pressure but inverse pressure don't worry too much about that we're gonna worry about that in just a little bit but the idea is to take all of that data that we had for pressure and we just calculate one over one over 64.3 one over 55 and we end up getting this data notice what happens we get a nice bold straight line right nice straight line for that well you guys should know how to get an equation of that line right y equals mx plus b okay Look what happens if we go through the x, the y-axis, right? For the, the pressure axis here, our pressure goes to zero as our volume goes to zero. So at some point we should get that. Well, anyway, that's not really going to be the case because you can't really get to that point. Obviously, you can see that that data doesn't extrapolate there because the gases are made up of particles. All right, anyway, so we've got this straight line. So what we can do is we can get what's called an equation of that line. So this is what Boyle found. As he looked at the data, he found that pressure increases, our volume decreases. This is known as an inverse proportionality. As the uh, pressure went up, the volume got smaller. So what I did was I made my volume go down and my pressure got larger. You saw that needle jumping. Well, as I let go of the piston, then the volume started to expand, and as that happened, my pressure decreased itself. They're inversely proportional to each other. One goes up, the other goes down. Now, if I have that straight line, Right, I've got that straight line that I had, and I got volume here and inverse pressure. Well, I can get the y-intercept for that. Y equals mx plus b. Well, as I said, the b, the y, the y-axis is zero, so this portion here is going to drop out because it's going to be equal to zero as it crosses the y-axis. Now, my volume is actually my x, right? That's x, and my pressure is y, and then we change it to a letter K, and that K is actually the slope of the line. Okay, now this is actually, I should take that back because this is really the pressure inverse, not pressure, right? So this is inverse pressure. 
1 over the pressure, okay? So when I rearrange this equation, I can end up getting this equation. Now, if you notice what I did here is I actually did the inverse of the volume in this because I forgot that that video had inverse pressure. It's not a big deal. Either way, you're going to end up with an equation that's going to be pretty much the same. The reason really why you want to do it this way is that when you bring over the, the variable, they're going to both be, you're going to remove the inverse, right? Volume would be 1 over. We can get rid of that. Okay, so don't worry too much about the origins of where they're never going to ask you to graph. We, we might do this in a lab uh, where I have you graph this stuff when we talk about it, but you're never going to be deriving these equations from the line. Okay, so this is Boyle's law. It, this is a constant. So k is referred to as a proportionality constant. This will not change. So if my pressure goes down, my volume goes up. So if I take a point on this graph, if I pick this point here, okay, that will have a pressure and a volume. Okay, if I say that that's 0.1, and then I pick another point here, okay, that's going to be 0.2, so I would have a pressure and a volume at that point. Well, the slope of the line is the same, which is what k is. It's the slope, and it's constant. I can say that if this is equal to k, this is equal to k, and that's pretty much what I'm doing down here. I'm saying that pressure 1, volume 1, is equal to constant. Okay, that would be right here. Pressure 2, volume 2, is equal to a constant, which would be here. Okay, so if these two constants are the same, couldn't I derive this equation? And this here is the more useful version of Boyle's Law. So we're going to get into the second uh, type of gas law, very similar to Charles Law, uh, I'm sorry, to Boyle's Law, uh, because Charles learned from the work of, of Boyle. He kind of read his papers and realized, oh, look at this, this guy wrote this paper about pressure and volume changes, and he did was he looked at temperature and volume changes. He kept pressure in the number of moles the same. So we're, notice what we're doing, we're keeping two variables changing and two variables constant throughout this whole thing. All right, so let's take a look at the experiment that uh, Charles did, and then we'll come back and look at the, um, um, the actual calculations, okay? Here's data for Charles' uh, lab. This is kind of a slower one. It's not as nice as fast as the Boyle's experiment, but we can see what's going on here. I have a gas in a closed container, and what I've done is I've set the temperature really high, so we can see that the temperature is going up and up and up. So we're adding heat to the gas, and as we add heat, as the temperature goes up, we see that the volume is going up, and notice it's going up as a straight line. All right, so if I kept doing this and continued to collect this data, obviously it would keep extending forward and, and backwards. So what Charles found is somewhat different than what Boyle found. Charles actually found that when we deal with uh, temperature, we get a nice straight line uh, for our data as opposed to that curve. So what he found is that the gases, uh, when we heat them, they're, in, they're directly proportional to the volume. So as we add temperature, I'm sorry, as we add heat and the temperature goes up, the volume goes up at the same rate. Now the problem with that, if you go back and look at his chart here real fast, his chart, if you look at where these, these extrapolate to, um, they all go to this number, negative 273. It didn't matter which gas he used, he used various gases, and each one of them ended up focusing on this point right here. Well, another scientist named Lord Kelvin decided, you know what, I'm going to call that point the zero point. Because, when you again, if you're looking at getting the equation of the line, y equals mx plus b, if you use Charles's data, your, your b is going to always be there. We want this to drop out. So this portion will drop out again because we're going through the zero point. So what that says is that as a gas gets to zero Kelvin, the volume should go to zero. right? And this is absolute zero, so it's a theoretical point. We don't quite actually get there. But again, we can say that this is temperature, this is my constant, and I should say the, the opposite, that this is my volume, and this is the constant, and this is temperature to keep it consistent with the graph here. All right, and then if I divide this over, I ended up I end up getting this equation here. So we can see that these are directly proportional. Temperature goes up. In order to keep this constant, my volume has to go up equally. Okay, if my temperature goes down, my volume has to go down at an equal ratio as well. All right, so we can bring this equation over here, and we can, again, just like we did for Boyle's Law, we can pick a point here, pick a point here, and say, okay, the slope is the same. So if this is point 0.1 and this is point 0.2, again, we could say V1, V1, T1, and then we could say V2 over T2 is equal to the same constant. These two are equal to each other. We can then get this equation. 
Now, what's very important about Charles Law, extremely important, is that you have to use the absolute scale. What that means is you must use Kelvin. Because we're using the absolute scale, we have to be working in Kelvin, otherwise this equation will not work out. So don't forget, temperature must be in Kelvin. Students make this mistake quite a bit. 